Welcome to Charts Today. My name is David Linton and today's edition for Tuesday the 14th of March comes to you from London. And wow, what a, what a few days it's been. Uh, markets really all over the place. Uh, we saw actually yesterday uh, the US t two year yield just plummeting. And in fact, we've seen the biggest move in the last day or two that we've seen since the uh, 1987 crash. We saw really a move from 5.1% all the way down to 3.8%, 130 basis point move really so unpredictable and in fact when I asked uh, my LinkedIn audience on Wednesday last week uh, where would US interest rates go more than half that respondent of two and a half thousand people who voted more than half those people said more than six percent I suspect if I asked the same question right now the answers would be very very different and in fact just looking at what the investment banks on Wall Street have just uh, been saying the last 24 hours, we're seeing them re-evaluating what the Fed's going to do on the next rate rise. So um, we're now seeing um, Namira saying we'll see a cut. Uh, Goldman's and Barclays saying no change. The market had really priced in 25 or 50 basis points. Only JP Morgan and Morgan Stanley are going there now. So really very interesting. What will the Fed do? Will they have changed after the Silicon Valley debacle? Will they have changed? Their, their view on rate rises and it'll be very interesting to see. And of course today we've got US CPI numbers out so US inflation rate will play into that decision so the market will be watching that and again the, the chances of re-evaluating that. A lot of volatility in the market and really it's uh, just crazy times and so Markets, of course, don't like that uncertainty, and so we are seeing some pretty big gyrations uh, there on the chart. So uh, looking at the US dollar, remembering this is the weekly, this is my daily, and this is my 60-minute chart, my long-term, medium-term, and short-term view of the market. We look at the currencies first, then global stock indices and commodities and energy last of all. And you're looking at the corresponding point and figure targets as well, of course. So the dollar, really interesting. If we look at that uh, on the cloud chart on the weekly, we found support on the weekly. We bounced off the cloud. So that was confirming the base of the long-term bullish trend. Remember, we're above the cloud, we're bullish. Below the cloud, we're bearish. And then we hit the cloud from the other end. So the cloud then forming a resistance point there. So really very interesting. And all, all eyes now are, We'll, we're now pulling back from that level. Will we go on to make a higher high or will we fall through that 100 level and make a lower low? And that's the really big question there on the long term picture. Uh, we've got mostly upside targets for the dollar on the long term. So it really still does look bullish. And of course, on that uh, weekly cloud, we're bullish. On the medium term, we're slightly bearish. But of course, we're seeing that dollar falling away, uh, very significantly falling away there over the last few days. That means that the euro has been nudging that 107 level, looking uh, stronger against that uh, weaker dollar. Uh, so that's really quite key. And if we look at sterling, uh, we were below 120 against the US dollar. We're now uh, actually nudging 122. So we're 121.44 at the moment. Uh, so really very interesting to see effectively sterling holding that position against the dollar. Uh, Bitcoin, that's been a very interesting one. That's been all over the place. We were below $20,000 uh, at the end of last week and we've recovered that position. We nudged back at 25, a lot of volatility in um, uh, the crypto area at the moment. And really, at the mo we did negate the upside target for Bitcoin. So it'll be very interesting. We'll still have a new one generated, whether we can actually activate that target. We didn't activate the target uh, and that was really quite key. Downside targets ruling, although we do have now a new very short term target on the 60 minute chart at 29,800. Can Bitcoin really go to $30,000? That's the big question. Watch the short term targets and of course if you're trading Bitcoin use the one minute charts. Uh, looking at markets, we've got the futures up slightly today. Uh, the market is now really more and more pricing in um, that the Fed won't tighten any further. And so we're seeing equities recover a little bit on that. But the Nasdaq is still bearish on the short term and long term. We've been bearish for several months there. Uh, so that's going to be really quite interesting. And these downside targets still do hang over us. A lot of volatility and a lot of uncertainty. The S&P future is up 0.35%. We put out a poll yesterday 
would we make a new high, a higher high or a new low? A new high above 4200 or a new low below 3500? Which will happen first? Just um, vote in that poll. We've got over a thousand votes already and uh, it was pretty bearish. But now, again, with the things, the way things are changing, more and more people might vote for a rise on the basis that we're going to see less tightening. Uh, we saw quite big moves yesterday. The FTSE future was down nearly 2% yesterday. The DAX in Germany, Germany was down over 2.5%. Commerce Bank down 10%. Uh, banks really been hit. We see that move there yesterday and German stocks really falling away. Not enough to change the longer and uh, medium term bullish picture, but that really that big fallback was there. We saw big moves uh, overnight in Asia as well. Uh, Japan was down 2.7%. The Hang Seng was down 2.3%. The Sensex uh, had fallen more heavily the day before, uh, so that was only down two thirds of a percent. Uh, so India now not not looking quite as bullish as it was back below the uh, the cloud there on the Sensex. So that's really quite key. And some of these longer term targets will come off the chart if we go any lower. The Aussie market actually was pretty resilient on Monday, fell more heavily on Tuesday down 1.4%. And we see that showing up there in the short term chart, moving back to bearish. Very hard to make money in this market. Seven and a half thousand, the pretty critical level there for the dollar. Uh, looking at gold, that's back above the $1,900 level. Uh, that's been one beneficiary of all of this turmoil, of course. And gold effectively hasn't really been bearish uh, above the medium and long term charts. So it's holding the lagging line, holding the cloud. Uh, so that's quite key. We've got a new upside target to 1995 if we go above 1915. Watch for activation of that. And silver was up 6% yesterday, just pulling back a little bit now. And of course, yields, we talked about yields. Uh, the US 10 year yields now sitting at 3.6%, uh, having really been above 4%, it's just really fallen back. Not as big move as big move in the longer dated uh, yields. Uh, it was obviously that shorter dated two year that really moved yesterday. But the fact is, the trend is still bullish for yields, but we're seeing a bit of a change there on that medium term chart and a lot of volatility uh, waiting really for what the markets say. Looking at the energy mix, uh, it's pretty red everywhere this morning. The one exception being US nat gas, uh, which we've called bullish for clients today. Looking at Brent crude, we're down 2%. Lots of downside targets there. That was our call this morning. Looking at US nat gas, as we mentioned, we've crossed back above the cloud here on the 60 minute chart. And so we are just seeing an improvement there. Um, just starting to see targets into the 270s. 280s, but we've got some new targets emerging. If you're trading Natty, use the one minute targets. Uh, looking at emissions, just struggled to get above that $100, uh, 100 euro mark, falling back, uh, just nudging that 95.50 level at the moment. So that's going to be really quite key. That's the key level. Sitting above 96 at the moment. Got targets in both directions, but really favoring that sort of those downside targets. There's more of them. Uh, we really do need to hold 95. So watch for that. Gas markets uh, were all over the place again yesterday. We opened uh, much lower. We're seeing here this volatility that's just playing into lots of other markets, uh, financial markets, basically in turmoil, very little standing still. We saw gas prices just jump and now we're seeing that pullback. This is a, a pullback with targets. A new target to the upside, watch the one minute and resolve those one minute targets. Of course, we put out the call this morning to clients. Looking at um, NBP, we see here again this pullback. We did have a target back to 107 pence, but actually we've got this new mini target that kicked into 120 this morning. That's nearly been met and we're just pulling away back from that. And German power, the Cal, Cal 24 on German power. Uh, again, look at that volatility, a really steady trend, and then lots of vol, lots of downside targets. That's what's happening there is those selling thrusts are producing the downside targets. So just remember that. Now that's it for today. All highs are going to be on the US Open and these inflation numbers. Until tomorrow, happy charting. See you then.